Hello, this is Dr. Bernstein of Diabetes University. Uh, thanks for looking in. We've had a request for me to demonstrate intramuscular insulin injection, which, which is why I have my sleeve rolled up. Uh, we're going to do it right now. The, uh, first of all, the way I'm doing it, you can only do it if you don't have fat arms. Um, if you have fat arms, you may have to use a muscle at the back of your leg, uh, the gastrocnemius muscle. Uh, or you may have to go into the sides of your legs, the outside of your legs, where even fat people frequently do not have thick fat deposits. The syringe that we use has the 12.7 millimeter needle you probably cannot see the needle in this close-up, but you can see the syringe. The syringe is not available with half-unit markings, and the needle, the needle is just barely long enough to get into the muscle. And uh, uh, we're going to use the deltoid muscle, which is in my arm. It's shaped like uh, an upside-down triangle. Uh, with the base at the top and it points down so that the tip of the triangle is halfway down your arm where my finger is right now. So this is the deltoid. It's a triangular muscle. Now, one warning. At the tip of the triangle is where the axillary nerve comes near the surface and then goes back down. You don't want to hear, hit the axillary nerve. You won't like it if you hit it. Now, to give a shot, you therefore should go higher up on the triangle near the shoulder, which is what you're going to do. And you go straight in because you want to make sure you get it into muscle. And you do it fast. If you do it slowly, it's going to hurt. Now, I, in my experience, one out of, tw out of 30 shots, whether I give it to me or to a patient, hits a blood vessel because uh, the blood vessels are near the surface uh, uh, in muscle. And uh, the blood vessels happen to cluster around nerves. So if you hit a blood vessel, it's likely to hurt. And so you not only get blood leakage, but you get uh, a little bit of pain. Not a lot because you've been fast. Now, I didn't put any insulin in the syringe, so I'm just going to throw it in and pull it out. The time it takes to inject the insulin, if your finger's on the top of the needle, is not very great. It's a minute fraction of a second. So uh, I take the tip so that I can just touch the muscle to feel where it is to, to make sure I got it in the right place. And I go, whoop, whoop, that's it. One, two, three, fast. And I didn't feel it. I'm going to rub my hand on to see if any blood leaked out. Because if blood leaked out, I don't want it to get on my shirt. I'll take my hand and wipe the blood away, and then I can wash it off my hand. Um, if you get a lot of bleeding, you can have a, a, a Kleenex handy, a tissue handy, uh, to wipe it off uh, or to press on it. Uh, in fact, I would say that if it hurts when you, when you throw the needle in, probably hit a blood vessel as well as a nerve, uh, do the injection, take it out, and press on the spot with your finger once you've done the injection just to prevent any blood from coming out. Another thing you want to prevent is any bleeding under the skin because it'll make a lump, and the lump might... Uh, either be itching or painful for a week or two if you do that. I want to give an intramuscular injection simply to get blood sugar down as rapidly as possible. Not everyone is going to want to do this. Uh, some people are afraid of it. Some people don't want to be bothered rolling up their sleeve. Uh, uh, on the other hand, some people will do it all the time whenever they're uh, even a little bit elevated, which uh, 
is sort of the direction w where I head. And uh, how fast can you get your blood sugar down? Well, it depends, of course, on the insulin that you use. I only use regular insulin because it's easier to measure. Uh, the uh, more rapid-acting insulins uh, are more, much more potent and therefore hard to measure precisely. Uh, but if you inject regular insulin a tiny amount, you know, it might be a half unit, an estimated half a unit because there are no half unit markings on the syringe, um, or at the maybe one unit, you know, how high can you go if you're on our regimen? You can't go very high. Um, uh, you should get most of your effect in about an hour and a half, almost all of it in two hours. Uh, there may be a hang on for another hour or so, but you get the bulk of the effect within two hours in my experience. So this is much faster than you get with, in, with subcutaneous injections. There is one special situation where I've had patients inject into a vein. Uh, this, uh, which uh, doesn't quite give instantaneous reduction of blood sugar because the effects of insulin do take time to get uh, glucose transporters moving, but uh, uh, an intravenous injection should be finished in about one hour. And uh, what's the situation? It's severe gastroparesis where your, your, a meal does not empty so your blood sugar goes low, you take glucose to bring the blood sugar back up, and maybe six hours later or a day later, that whole meal comes out, or maybe that meal plus a few others, and your blood sugar goes sky high. It could go to 500, could go to 1,000, as many meals empty uh, at the same time. And uh, of course, it is a good idea to give an intravenous shot at that time, but I'm not going to teach you how to do it because this is such a rare occurrence. Uh, that's it for intramuscular injections. Take a look at the screen below to see other uh, video and audio offerings that we have, and uh, we'll see you at the next session. Thanks for watching. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site AskDrBernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so AskDrBernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.